Welcome back to the Evolution of Fighter Plane series. Last episode, we looked at how the second generation fighters such as the MiG-21 escalated the race between the East and the West to develop the ultimate fighter plane. In the fourth episode of the series, we'll be looking at the best third generation fighter jets that were developed during the heightening of the Cold War. The MiG-25 Foxbat. The MiG-25 was a Soviet supersonic interceptor that was the last project of the legendary plane designer and engineer Mikhail Gurevich. The MiG-25, codenamed by NATO as the Foxbat, was primarily made from steel and was created as a supersonic interceptor with reconnaissance capabilities. The Foxbat saw its first flight in 1964 and was introduced to active service in 1970. Its purpose was to provide a solution to the American strategic bombers and their high-flying U-2 spy plane. The MiG-25 was capable of flying at a very maximum speed of Mach 3.2, but this was typically limited to Mach 2.8 due to the stress its true capability would put on its two R-15B-300 single-shaft turbojets. The MiG-25 remains one of the fastest fighter jets to enter mass production, being beaten by the likes of the SR-71 Blackbird. The Foxbat was 78 feet and 2 inches in length, with a wingspan of 46 feet, and could operate above a reported 80,000 feet in order to deter and combat American spy planes. This incredible ceiling has since seen the MiG-25 become privately owned to provide civilians with trips to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. MiG-25s were typically armed with four R-40 air-to-air missiles that were equipped with infrared and radar homing capabilities. The missiles could seek a target up to 60 kilometers away, yet despite its deadly armament, the MiG-25 was not equipped with a gun. The West's initial reaction to the MiG-25 was that of great concern. The Foxbat remained mysterious and was met by the acceleration of the American F-15 program. This fear of the Foxbat remained until the 6th of December 1976, when the Russian Lieutenant Viktor Belenko flew his Foxbat across the Soviet Union to Japan, where he defected along with his aircraft. The Americans were quick to examine the feared jet, only to reveal that despite it being outstandingly fast, it subsequently had little to offer in terms of maneuverability. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom The F-4 Phantom was a tandem two-seat, twin-engine, long-range, all-weather supersonic interceptor with fighter-bomber capabilities. The Phantom saw its first flight in 1958, and since that original deployment with the US Navy, it quickly became recognised as an impressively versatile aircraft. The F-4 would go on to be adopted by the US Marines and Air Force, establishing itself as a major asset in the American arsenal. Phantom production ran from 1958 to 1981 with a total of 5,195 aircraft being built, making it the most produced supersonic American military aircraft in history. The Phantom could be equipped with more than 18,000 pounds of weapons, which ranged from air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles and various bombs. Initially, the Phantoms lacked an internal cannon, but as later models were engineered, the M61 Vulcan cannon was added to the American fighter. The Phantom measured at a length of 63 feet and a wingspan of 38 feet and 5 inches, with a top speed of Mach 2.2. The Phantom gained its reputation as a deadly fighter during the Vietnam War, where it was pitted against the Soviet-designed MiG-21s that continued to wreak havoc on American F-105s. The Phantoms outperformed the MiGs thanks to its impressive armament and the overall better technology, which made up for its lack of manoeuvrability. The F-4 recorded 151 air-to-air -air kills to 41 air-to-air -air losses during the Vietnam War. However, the F-4 saw heavy losses when it came under attack from ground fire, with over 400 Phantoms being shot down. The Hawker Siddeley Harrier The Hawker Siddeley Harrier is perhaps the most recognisable aircraft from this list. It was the first operational vertical short takeoff and landing aircraft and saw success operating from a number of Western nations. The Harrier was lethal as a ground attack aircraft while also proving useful at providing reconnaissance for its operator. 
As time progressed, it became apparent that the British V-style jet would also become a notorious air-to-air -air fighter. The Harrier was introduced on the 1st of April 1969 and was later updated to fit the needs of the Royal Navy by becoming what we now know as the Sea Harrier. The RAF's Harriers and the Navy's Sea Harriers established themselves as impressive fighters during the 1982 Falklands War between the British and Argentina. Over the course of the war, the British faced what many anticipated to be superior Argentine dogfighting aircraft in the form of the Mirage 3s and A4 Skyhawks. However, the Harrier's ability to thrust vector proved decisive to evade the chasing Argentines. The Harrier could use the manoeuvre known as Viffing, which was developed by the Americans with their fleet of Harriers, to force the chasing Argentines to overshoot by slamming the thrust nozzle forward, thereby coming to an abrupt halt mid-flight. The Harrier would quickly go from the hunted to the hunter, resulting in the British claiming 31 air-to-air -air kills over the Argentines, destroying a further 30 of their aircraft on the ground. The British lost only nine of their Harrier fleet during the course of the war, five of which were to ground fire and a further four to accidents. Unlike the other aircraft in this video, the Harrier was not supersonic. The v stole jet topped out at a reported 711 miles per hour, due to its single Rolls-Royce Pegasus vectored thrust turbofan engine. The Harrier could be armed with a range of air-to-air, air-to-ground and air-to-ship missiles, whilst also carrying a range of unguided bomb. The Harriers were equipped with two 30mm aiding cannons that each featured 130 rounds of ammunition. The Harrier was 46 feet 6 inches in length, with a wingspan of 25 feet and 2 inches. Honourable Mentions The Saab Viggen The Swedish once again produced another remarkable jet fighter in the form of the Viggen. The Viggen was intended to eventually replace the Draken as the predominant Swedish fighter. It was regarded as the most advanced jet fighter created by a European nation today and first saw service in June 1971. Despite its advanced delta wing design, the Viggen was able to operate from short runways, which were also used as public roads, just like the Draken that preceded it. Viggen pilots shocked the aviation world when they were able to confirm a lock on the then deemed untouchable American SR-71, proving just how remarkable this airframe was and just how lethal it could prove to be. The Su-24 Fencer The Su-24 Fencer was the Soviet answer to the impressive American F-111 Aardvark. The most notable feature of the Su-24 was its swept wing design and a cockpit which allowed its crew to pilot the aircraft while sitting side by side. The Su-24 first took flight in July 1967 and since then has continued to be successfully upgraded to a point where the Russian Air Force can still be seen to operate the aircraft today. The Su-24 was purpose-built to be an all-weather day and night fighter for the Soviet Union, whilst also being the first Russian plane to feature a digital navigation and attack system. And that's it for this episode of the Evolution of Fighter Planes. Next time we'll be looking at the best fourth generation fighters that continue to be operated to this day. Please subscribe and leave a like if you're enjoying the series, and leave a comment with what aircraft you believe should feature in the next episode.